Hi, this is Sean Olson. Today's tutorial is going to show you how to quickly set up a Funk Track Train with Wallworm inside 3ds Max. So in this scene here, we have three uh, parts of a train, just uh, simple boxes here to represent a train. And we're going to build a Funk Track Train and make the train follow a path. I'm going to start by creating a simple area for the train to go along with Corvex. So to start with, I'm going to go to the shapes and create an arc here because I'm going to make a path that follows uh, the side of a, a hill or a mountain. And here's the general path that we're going to have here. So what we're going to have is a ledge along a hill here. I'm going to start by selecting the first spline and the second spline. And the order that I select these is kind of important here because I'm going to use the Corvex utility floater and I'm going to create a wall with a height of 768 and I want to use interpolation here I'm going to use the selection and the order that I selected these matters and I'm going to say make floor plan and it created an object here and to make this uh, the UVs flow here correctly. I'm going to open up the Corvex and choose side flow 1 for this object. So now the side of this object has the correct UVs. And now I need to create another spline along here for the train. So for this I'm going to go back to the create panel and go back to splines and go back to arc. I want to turn on snap to midpoint and I want to create an arc that's right through the middle of this. And this is going to be our path. So I'm going to name this train path. So at this point we have to tell this path that we're going to have entities along it for our train. But in order to make this spacing correct we're going to have to apply a modifier to the spline. What we want to do is normalize spline. And for this one, we want to choose a length that roughly is the length of our cars. And I know the cars on here are 512, so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to right-click and hit Convert to Editable Spline. Now when I do that, if I isolate this, you'll see that all the points on here are equally spaced, except for potentially at the very end very end we may ha have a different uh, spacing but that's fine we can deal with that later. I'm going to go out of vertex sub element mode and you can see here we have just this spline selected. At this point we're going to open up Anvil in Wallworm and we're going to open up the miscellaneous tab. In here you'll see a rollout called Wallworm Shape to Paths. What we want to do is add a path track to this spline and we want it to place a path track at each of the knots. So if we go back to the vertex it will put one at each of these knots. Should we choose interpolation it will uh, add a lot more but that's not what we want. That's why we normalize the spline to put them at exact spacings. And I also wanted to use this use look at constraint. It will make it uh, easier to deal with in the future. And now we just hit generate path points and it may take a minute here. Once it finished, if we zoom in here, you're going to see a whole bunch of entities. Each of these is a path track entity with their current setting, um, their next path target pointed to the next one. And because they have look at constraints, if I move one, you'll see that the others follow suit, any of them that are looking at it. Now the next part of making a funk train is we need to create funk track trains above all of these points or above all of the points where we would like a train. So if we would like our train to be this many segments long, let's deselect our... So we have 10 chunks to our train. We're going to select those entities that we have there and we're going to hit this create funk track trains above the selected path tracks. Once we did that, there's these brush entities that are funk track trains. And you'll notice that there are speed spinners here. 
or speed sliders. These control the speed of these uh, track train. Also, when that happens, automatically there's a logic auto added to the center of the screen with all of the track trains added to its list here with uh, outputs to start forward. And you can change this and do whatever you want with these. I'm going to unisolate our selection and go back to our train. I'm going to select all three of these, go to the Models tab. In the Models tab, I'm going to turn on Local Origin, Origin and SMD. And that's important, and you need to use the, uh, you have to be using the Wallworms SMD exporter for those to do it like this. Choose a metal surface property, quick WWMT. That makes helpers in the scene for these models. I'm going to select these three helpers, go to the proxies tab, and hit create proxies from selected. So it created three copies of these that are going to export as props. I'm going to select this core of X object and hide it. I'm also going to hide the splines in here. So all we see are our funk track trains and path track. At this point, I'm going to go back to the miscellaneous tab. I'm going to select just the box car and the container car, not the engine. And I'm going to hit set proxies to distribute. So it's going to collect those. And now I want to select all of these, except for the very first one here. And I want to hit Orient Proxies to Funk Track Train and Distribute Props. So it's going to distribute them across all of these. Now notice, my spacing is wrong. They're too close together and it, this isn't going to really work correctly. So, essentially, what we want to do is start over, but it's no big deal because we can do the whole process really quickly. We're going to delete this time slider. We're going to delete all of this stuff here. That's fine. We're also going to make sure we delete the logic auto that was added at the center of the screen. Let's unhide all and start over with our spline. This is the path again. So we want to go back to our normalized spline and decide, no, these need to be more than 512 units apart. And this time we want to probably calculate the difference between these. And these are all 128 units apart. So instead of 512, we want to do 512 plus 128. And if you didn't notice, know this in max down at the bottom left, you can do things like this. 512 plus 128 and you'll get an answer. There's what we want. 640. Now that we've done that, let's convert to an editable spline again. And let's start over. We've got this spline selected. Let me hide this um, again. We've got our track selected. Use look at constraints. Spline knots. We did that. We've got all of those selected here. We just want to select the first several ones of these. Go to create funk tracks here. There we go. And let's select our proxies again. We want these two proxies. We want to orient proxies to funk train. We're going to select all of these except for the very last one and then distribute. And now you see we have these along a path with some spacing here and that's what we want. Now we want to go to get, put the engine on here so we're going to select just the engine. We're going to tell it to set that as the proxy to distribute and we're going to select just this end one here and uh, distribute props. So now we have an engine. Now we're going to move uh, Anvil out of the way for a minute. And we don't want all of these trains to be the same colors, etc. We're not going to take time to actually texture these, but we're going to make a few different materials for them to show you how some of the proxy skinning tools work. In my material editor, I have a material for the container. I'm going to copy this a few times. 
And we want another container that's going to be a dark black. And this is going to be container skin 01. Copy this name, make it easier here. We'll make another one that has kind of a rusty colored. Call this 2. So we have three of these. And I'm going to put this skin on this one, this skin on this one. We're going to do the same with the box cars. And the engine will just keep it fine. And we're going to apply this to the box cars. And now that we have that done, we're going to go back to our wall or model tool helpers, select all three of these. Actually, we don't need to select the engine because we're only creating skins for those. We're going to open up Anvil again. We're going to go to the models tab and we're going to click this button that says collect skins from proxies. And now those skins have been added to the models. And we also have a function here that since those wall or model tools are uh, selected, if we choose this randomize proxy skins, it will randomize the skins of the selected models. In the screen here you'll see. And you can keep on clicking those as you want until it gets to a, a pattern that you might want. You can also select an individual one and go to the uh, skin properties here and change the skin value if you would like. Make that one dark. So now we have our track train. If we don't want these models to export into the actual originals, we just select those and we go to this and tell it to exclude export of model so it will only export the proxies. Probably don't want these proxies in the scene, but we'll leave them there for the moment. So what we need to do now is export the models and the textures. I'm going to select these three while we're model tool helpers. And I'm going to hit all textures. So it's going to export the materials and quick compile and it's going to export all the models. And one last thing before we export the level, I'm going to create a uh, camera in the view because if you do that then uh, I hit control C in the currently active camera if you do that then it will export into the VMF as the active viewport camera and we'll export this now and now we'll open it up in hammer so here's our level inside of hammer and all of the trains are here uh, the paths are here. Notice that in Hammer the trains along the train track are all facing to the east. Uh, that's because that's requirement of the way the trains work. But when they when the level is compiled uh, they will all be facing the correct way and following the path. If we zoom in here we see that underneath each of these is our funk track train and we have our path tracks underneath it and they're all facing the right way. So when you compile it the train will start moving along. My name is Sean Olson. This has been a tutorial on using funk track trains with Wallworm. You can get the latest version of Wallworm at wallworm.com. Thank you and have a good day.